In the last bit of the Aeneid, we learned the reasons why Juno hates the Trojans so much. They have been fated to evolve into the Roman race and eventually destroy Carthage, her favorite city, and where she keeps her weapons and chariot. Virgil reminds us of all of this with Id Metuanes in line 23. Remember this, because he will repeat this almost identically in line 61, which describes Jupiter also trying to forestall destruction. The rest of this line is in chiastic order, A-B-B-A, and it's good to know that words of memory like memor here take the genitive case. In this instance, the ancient war being referred to is the Trojan War. It's not ancient in the context of this story, but much like the Antiqua in line 12, we are in the perspective of Virgil and his audience rather than Juno's, Saturnia in this line since Juno is the daughter of Saturn. Prima in 24 probably means earlier, but it could also recall the primus in the first line, where it means leader or chief. And this relative clause, introduced by quod, neuter, because its antecedent belli is the war, is neuter, describes the Trojan War in a bit greater detail. Ad Troyam tells us where. The Caris Argis refers to the Greeks. Argos was a city in Greece sacred to Juno. Surprise, surprise. And it can be used for all of Greece. And it's this city that gives us the Homeric term Argives, which he uses uh, synonymously for Greeks. Virgil does too. Take special care about the tenses here. Both geserat and excederant are pluperfect. Animo is an ablative of separation, translated as from her mind. And with poetry, you can often figure out how to read an ablative by paying careful attention to a prefix on the main governing verb. Excederant, uh, the ex means from, and that's the word we use to translate animo. We also get a reference to wrath or their causes, which is one of Virgil's main themes in the Aeneid, with the causa irarum and the saevi dolores, savage pains, which lead to rage. And while we're on the subject of ablatives, alta mente is an ablative of location. Lines 27 and 28 give us these reasons. So we have the judgment of Paris. So in short, this recalls the marriage of Peleus and Thetis, the parents of Achilles. At this wedding, the goddess Strife, who was upset at not being invited, tossed a golden apple with the indefinite inscription to the fairest. Naturally, Juno, Venus, and Minerva, to use their Latin names in, in Greek, they are Hera, Aphrodite, and Athena, respectively, all thought that the apple was for them. But Jupiter, uh, Zeus in Greek, didn't want to play favorites, so he allowed a mortal, the Trojan Paris, to decide. Paris was bribed by all three goddesses, and Juno promised him power, becoming the ruler of the world, Minerva, skill in war and wisdom, and Venus offered him the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris, I guess being your standard guy, chose Venus as the winner, and the woman became Helen, and the Trojan War began. So that's what the Inuria also refers to. Juno's beauty was rejected. Genos in Wisum refers to the Trojans as the hated race. So why, though? So it's not just because they will destroy Carthage, but also this is a general hatred for all things Trojan because the race was founded by Dardanus, the son of Jupiter and Electra, and thus a clear reminder, like Hercules, of Juno's husband's many infidelities. Dardanus plays an important role as Aeneas wanders the Mediterranean, too. When Aeneas is supposed to settle in the land of his ancestors, Virgil puts Dardanus, before he founded the Trojans, in Etruria, a region in Italy just north of Rome. So the final reason for Juno's cruel hatred of the Romans is Ganymede, a Trojan descendant of Dardanus, son of Tros, after whom the Trojans were named, and the brother of Elus, the founder of Troy. So myth has it that Jupiter preferred Ganymede, transformed himself into an eagle, snatched the boy up as he tended to his flock on the slopes of Mount Ida, and brought him to Mount Olympus. Here he was offered immortality and became Jupiter's cupbearer. So why would this inflame Juno so much? Well, there's the fact that Jupiter was kind of supposed to have a thing for Ganymede, and we've already learned that Juno is jealous of this. And also Ganymede replaced as cupbearer Hebe, Juno's daughter. The rapti here describes the genitive Ganymedes rather than the nominative plural honores, as Ganymede was literally snatched up and stolen by an eagle. 
Juno is naturally enraged by these things. Another reference to Juno as our instrument of rage in this poem. And he's here refers to these three reasons. So these Trojans, the Tross, tossed on the whole sea, an ablative of location. Before we learn what Juno is doing to these Trojans, Virgil gives us even more description of them with this a positive phrase, the leftovers of Achilles, the Dedanes, which is another word for Greeks, like Argives, that Homer uses. Just don't confuse Danaeans, the Greeks, and descendants of Danaos, founder of Argos, with Dardanians, the Trojans and descendants of Dardanus. In many ways, Juno has already wreaked havoc on the Trojans throughout the Trojan War. And these Trojans are just war refugees, the survivors of the war, the lucky few. Finally, in line 31, we find out what Juno is doing to these Trojans. Lateo, by the way, is another ablative of separation after Archebat, keep away from. The next clause switches subjects to the Trojans. Notice how erabant is plural, while Archebat is singular. Multos peranos refers to the long years Aeneas wandered around the Mediterranean. Mariomnia kirkum. Finally, acti fatis brings back the idea of fato profugus in line two. It's their fate, whether they like it or not. We end with one of the more profound and emphatic lines of the Aeneid. The conclusion to this introductory section, tantai molis, is a genitive of description, and erat should be translated first impersonally. It was of such great burden, or it was such a great task, maybe. Condere, here, to found, implies the founding of Rome, but as I mentioned when this verb is used in line 5, the dum conderet urbem part, until he would found a city, there's a connection to the end of the Aeneid, where condere takes on the much more violent meaning of burying a sword. There's violence and fury entwined with the greatness of Rome. And this line also reinforces the general idea of the Aeneid, namely that great things cannot be established without great toil and pain. Next, we will visit Juno and see the result of her wrath with a speech filled with fire and brimstone.